What's up everybody, David Aryev here again for iDesign.com for another super fantastic Octane tutorial. Uh, I don't have a ton of time today, but I still wanted to jump in and record a quick tip on what to do in certain cases with Octane's motion blur. On the surface it seems simple, but there are some places where you could get into a lot of trouble if you don't know what you're doing. So let's check it out. Alright, so here we've got that futuristic city that you guys all know and love so well. And if I play this, you'll see that there is currently no motion blur uh, until we go into the Octane camera tag and then go to the motion blur tab and hit enable. And there you go, you've got motion blur. Now I intentionally cranked it up uh, just to make it dramatic and obvious. And I think this is like way too much. Um, so typically I only use values between 0.025 round here and 0.05 is about as high as I would push it. So that's just a rule of thumb and obviously you can do what you like, but any more than that I feel looks pretty unnatural. All right, so here's a unique scenario where you've got your spaceman floating through a field of cubes and what's different about this setup is he is parented to the camera, so that just makes it easy to keep pace with your subject as the camera is moving through your scene. Um, but when we turn on motion blur in this case, check out what happens. So let me get a motion blur, enable. Okay, the cubes are motion blurring, but my dude is gone. So let's go back to the beginning just to see what's happening. And you can see that he's turned into this super long streak of motion blur. And even if we resend our scene, he's still going to be totally blurred out. So the issue is that Octane is not understanding the relationship between camera and subject and it's treating him as if we're whizzing by him on every frame. So what we need to do is right click and go to C4D Octane Tags and drop in an Octane Object Tag and that should clear it up immediately because if you look on Motion Blur, the default mode is Transform and that's all we need in this case. Now, if he were flailing his arms um, wildly, we wouldn't get the motion blur from that by just doing transform. We would want transform slash vertex, which would also take into account the speed of the individual vertices and account for deformations. And I'll show that to you here in this other scene. All right, so here we are again with our spaceman, and I've just given him some flaily arms with some vibrate tags just for demoing purposes. Um, but if we fire this up into Octane, even when we've got motion blur on, uh, and even when we put an Octane object tag on him, let's just fire this again just to double check, we can see that there's no motion blur. Let's scrub forward a bit. Sometimes there's no motion blur on frame zero, so it's better to check somewhere in here. Uh, so the issue right now is that we're on object motion blur is transform, and his vertices are what are deforming. So let's go to transform slash vertex, and let's play this a little bit. And there we go, we can see we're getting some motion blur on his arms. We can crank this up just to see a little bit better effect here. And there we go, you can see we're getting a bunch of motion blur, but just on his arms. And if it ever loses it, you can just fire this back and it should update properly and you'll actually see the motion blur. It's a little more accurate when you actually render it a picture viewer. All right, and the last scenario I wanted to discuss was what to do with fluid sims. Historically, fluid sims have not been able to display motion blur with Octane, but that's recently changed with the latest version. So here I've just got some explodey fruit that is slowing into a time freeze. And with that, I've also got a real flow scene going on. So if I play this back, you'll see that I've got this water mesh that gradually explodes. And I'll wait for it to get a little further in. So we can kind of check out what's going on. So here's my real flow sim, and I want to add my water texture to it. And you can see that we're currently not getting any motion blur. So what if we go to C4D Octane Tags and Octane Object Tag, and maybe change it to Transform Vertex, and we're still getting no motion blur but there's this cool new mode called vertex speed and under vertex speed it asks for speed x y and z and when you create a mesh in real flow and start playing it automatically generates these three velocity vertex tags so it should be pretty obvious where those go if i just lock this i can drag in the x the y and the z 
and then I'll need to resend this render and there we go we've got some beautiful motion blur on our fluid sim here which renders surprisingly fast and will always look better than trying to do this kind of thing in post all right thanks for watching you guys and I hope this was helpful stay tuned next time for a full-length tutorial see you guys later